Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over how to find the enthalpy change when you're dissolving a salt. If you are in my AP Chemistry class, I'm going to work number three and four of the post-lab questions. So just as a refresh, what is enthalpy? Enthalpy is the energy change um, for a system. Specifically, what we're talking about here is what it, how many kilojoules are either absorbed or released um, when a mole is reacted. And so the unit for enthalpy, well, enthalpy is always delta H. The unit is kilojoules per mole. And it is important we know that unit. Um, it's actually specifically mole of reaction, which means every time you have one reaction, um, how much heat is released or absorbed. So this question asks, calculate delta H when 15 grams of KOH are added to 185 grams of water. Initial temp is 20 degrees Celsius. Final temp is 38.4 degree, 41 degrees Celsius. So the first thing you want to do when you are trying to find your enthalpy change is you need to solve for how much heat the system either absorbed or released. Your temperatures are always temperatures of the system, not the surroundings. So, and the surroundings had a temperature change. So the Q for my surroundings, because it's a temperature change, I'll use MCAT. The mass that you use is the mass of the KOH and water combined. So that would be 200 grams times, use the specific heat for water, which is 4.184 joules per gram times degree Celsius. Delta T is final minus initial, so 38.41 minus 20 degrees Celsius. And you multiply all those values. And when we multiply them, we get the Q for the surroundings is um, 15,405 joules. So that is the amount of heat that the surroundings have absorbed. But when I want to find enthalpy change, I'm trying to find the enthalpy change for KOH, which is the it dissolving in water. That is the system. This is for the surroundings because you get the temperature of the surrounding water. So the water's temp has gone up, um, which means when that KOH is dissolving, it is giving off heat. Um, it's an exothermic change because it's made the surrounding water's temp go up. So... What I need to do is you have to change the sign to get the Q of your system, which in this case is the KOH dissolving in water. So when I change the sign, it becomes a negative 15.405 joules, and you want to change it to kilojoules. To go from joules to kilojoules, you divide by 1,000. So I get that the heat that my KOH, when it dissolved, gave off was negative 15.4 kilojoules. Um, that is the heat for my system. Because again, you always get the temp of these surroundings. Now, the unit for enthalpy is kilojoules per mole of reaction. Um, and when dissolving with water, this can confuse students. So when you write a dissolving equation, this is the dissolving equation. KOH solid becomes a K ion, that's aqueous now, and an OH ion, that's aqueous now. That's the equation. You don't actually add water to a dissolving chemical reaction um, when you're writing the equation. And so the moles I'm going to divide it by, well, what's the, the only thing that I have in my equation is KOH. So it's going to be divided by moles of KOH. Um, now, this is grams of KOH. And again, it's not like combined grams to get your moles because it's the moles of what's dissolving, which is my KOH. Um, so 15 grams KOH. You have to go to your periodic table and find the molar mass of KOH. It is 56.106 grams of KOH are in one mole. There are 0.267 moles of KOH. And so to get my enthalpy change, 
it is your kilojoules divided by your moles. So 0 0.267. That gives me an enthalpy change of negative 57.6. Again, kilojoule per mole is the unit. Because it's a negative enthalpy, that means this is an exothermic change, which means when KOH dissolves in water, it releases energy or it gives off energy. Um, and that makes sense because, again, the temperature of my surroundings went up, which means the KOH was giving off heat. Um, which matches this. So that is how you solve for enthalpy when you're given temperatures and masses. The next problem that I'm going to do is still an enthalpy problem, but it's actually going to be working backwards. Um, and so if you're in my class, it is number four. So what's the change in temperature if 10 grams of NaOH were added to 140 grams of water? So this time I'm asking you to find delta T. The only way we can find delta T is from an MCAT. MC delta T, my mass um, would be 150 grams. My specific heat of water is 4.184. And I want to find delta T. I can't solve for this problem as it is because I don't have a heat. I don't know how much heat the surroundings um, either absorbed or were given off. So if you were in my class, this is number four, you would need to go back in the lab because earlier in the lab, we solved for the enthalpy change when you dissolve NaOH in water. It is in part two. If you're not in my class, there it is. <laughs> It is negative 44.48 kilojoules per mole of reaction. That's the enthalpy change for dissolving NaOH. And so I'm going to have to use this enthalpy value to find my Q. Now, enthalpy again is kilojoules per mole. The only mole that matters in this is NaOH because that is what is doing the dissolving. Um, and so I don't have NaOH in moles. I have it in grams. This is really just dimensional analysis. So 10 grams NaOH. Anytime you have grams, you always want to go to moles. The molar mass for NaOH is 39.998 grams of NaOH are in one mole of NaOH. Um, now I need to use my enthalpy value in this dimensional analysis. So to add in my enthalpy value, pay attention to your units. It's negative 44 kilojoules per mole. Um, and when I units have to cancel, this is one mole. So one mole goes at the bottom, negative 44.48 kilojoules would go on top. Now I have my heat value. So 10, um, and that is 10 times negative 44.48 divided by negative 1.12 kilojoules. Now, just like before, this is, because this is my enthalpy for sodium hydroxide dissolving in water, that is the Q for my system, my NaOH. In your MCAT, you always use Q of these surroundings because I want change in temperature of the surroundings. So just like before, I'm going to take this and we have to flip the sign. So it's a positive 1.12 kilojoules. And it has to become joules because the specific heat of water is in joules. Um, and so to go from kilojoules to joules, it's one kilojoule has a thousand joules. So that would be one, two, zero joules. That is the Q of your surroundings. Now I can plug it into my MCAT. So one, one, 
equivalent to O joules equals 150 grams times 4.184 joules per gram times degrees Celsius times delta T. 150 times 4.184 is 627.6 times delta T. Divide both sides by 627.6. Get the change in temperature is 17.7 degrees Celsius. And at the positive value, the temperature of the surroundings go up because the enthalpy is exothermic. Again, that makes sense. I say you always need to use a common sense check. Exothermic changes release energy to the surroundings. And so if NaOH dissolving is exothermic, that means the temperature of the surroundings will go up. And so that matches. My common sense check has worked. Um, I hope this video helps you.